So we're going to paint some flower patches down here in this painting I had already started. I've primed the canvas with a pink acrylic underpainting, which I use with many of my landscapes because it seems to bring out more vibrant colors. I then painted the first layer of the bushes with a simple mix of titanium white and French ultramarine blue. It's a thin layer, and this first layer serves two purposes. It signifies the location of the bushes relative to the rest of this grassy area, and also it helps create the backdrop layer for the rest of the flowers that are going to be stacked on top. Now keep in mind, we are using oil paints in this tutorial, and we will be working in a few layers, so we won't be finishing this painting in one session. So once this first layer dries, then let's start painting the shadows in darker parts of these flowers. This color looks like it's black, but actually it's called Payne's Gray. It's a good substitute for black because it mixes better with the other colors and doesn't leave the mixture looking muddy. So I'm applying some rough patches of shadows in some random areas. Even with painting these random spots, make sure that most of the darkness is in the bottom of the bushes, as the light is going to be more on the upper parts. So immediately after this part, we're going to be mixing in some colors along with the shadows, so that they blend together. Take note that the top flower bush is darker than the bottom two, so we'll be using darker values of the blue color. Now for these bottom two bushes, I'm using a lighter mixture, but I'm still using a variety of color values, some places with darker blues and some with lighter blues. So once I get enough of these colors established on here, I allow them to be blended together along with the shadows. Along with flowers in these bushes, you're going to have some green leaves integrated here as well. Same as the flowers, use a variety of green here to be blended along with the blue colors. Overall, this part of the painting is loose and you're not going for accuracy. Implementing a diverse array of color and value is a primary objective here. So once I finish up this layer, I'll wait for it to dry, which with this paint is about two days. Now I'll be using some brighter color values on the top of the bushes where the light source is the strongest. I'll be using a smaller brush to get more refined detail. I'm painting most of the bright colors on top, and as I go down, I'm dispersing less of this mixture onto the painting. As I get to the lower parts of the foliage, I use a slightly darker color, but still light enough to indicate depth over the previous layer. I'm also painting brighter leaves here as well. Don't forget this, but make sure that you don't go overboard with painting at this stage. It's easy to get carried away and think that the more you paint here, the better it is. Actually, it's the opposite. You're just going to overdo it and end up making the painting look too flat. Be efficient with your brushing. Now that I got that out of the way, I'm going back to the shadow color and reapplying some dark spots because I noticed I overdid some of the painting in some areas, and so I need to reapply some contrast here, especially since I'm painting three separate areas of foliage. Be careful here, because at this stage you don't want to do too much blending. The brushing here needs to be more precise, so be more selective at how you add the shadows. But even if you do end up making a mistake, that's no big deal because if anything, you can always wait until the mixture dries again and then come back and repeat the steps. Also, important point here, don't just use a blue color here. In some areas, try to add more variety of blue. Very slightly offset the color with a tiny amount of magenta or red so that you can have a greater variety of color in these flower patches. And then in other spots here, try offsetting the blue color with a tiny amount of green. So when you have a more diverse array of color hues but are still in the same color family, the image you paint has a greater sense of fullness to it. But the colors here now have a fuller, richer appearance. Okay, now let's move on to the top set of flowers. Here you can see that the color is going to be darker, but the same exact principles still apply. Remember that when you paint these clusters of flowers that you do it as randomly as possible, so that some parts have different shapes and sizes. Pay careful attention to the values here, because since this bush has generally darker color values, your gradation of value will be more subtle. So just pay attention when you paint the brighter parts on top versus the bottom parts where the shadows are. So once you're done with that, I'll go back real quick and finish up any parts where the green leaves are surrounding the flowers or coming out of the bushes. And again, if you do end up making a mistake, wait for the layer to dry, go back and reapply some of the dark blue and black color values to the shadows, reapply the lighter parts accordingly. Okay, so now for the final part. Some flower bushes are going to have a diverse array of flowers in them, and so the bottom two sets of flowers are going to have some white and light magenta flowers dispersed along with all the blue ones. With these, I'm going to use a smaller and thinner brush to get them in here. And I don't need to wait for this layer to dry either. 
Make sure the mixture is thick enough so that it's able to stand on its own all over this paint underneath. Although some blending is to be expected. So there you have it. This is one way to paint flower bushes. And of course there will be other methods of doing so. Which I will show in other videos I plan on making. If you found anything of value here, please hit the like button and if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching.